Welcome back to the food forest, everybody. This video is going to be split into two parts. We're going to rebuild part of our annual bed and extend it and uh, go through the details on why we're designing it in certain ways. And then the second half of the video, for those of you who like longer videos, we're going to just go around and show some updates of the entire food forest. All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're updating the annual garden. And what we're going to do this year is instead of just having a big box garden, we're gonna kind of cut a walking path straight down the middle so that we can reach over to the trellis. We're gonna grow tomatoes up the trellis. That's the north side of the garden. And then off of the main walking path, we're gonna draw these, have these spiraling kind of swale beds. So beds on contour. They're gonna be a little raised this year because we've got a lot of compost and uh, horse manure and my next level compost to add into that. We're gonna build these beds right on top of the old garden bed, which two or three years ago was a mix of horse manure and shredded leaves. And we're gonna just get some more fertility in. But the main thing we wanna do is we wanna get the garden, the annual garden organized and usable, functional. So we're gonna put nice walking paths in there. We're gonna have the bed separated such that when you're on the walking pathway, you can reach roughly halfway into the bed from each side and that kind of maximizes the garden space. I was thinking of doing a keyhole design. This is kind of like a bunch of keyhole beds. And then any kind of water is going to be held on a heavy rain. It's going to be held in the walking path, soak into those wood chips all the way down and that'll act as a giant sponge of water that if the plants did need to get at some of that water, they can. That'll just make watering needs in this garden pretty much non-existent for the summer. So let's go make some of that next level compost. Uh, we'll mix some of that in and we'll start building the next section of the bed. Check out my video that I'll post here in the corner on how I made that next level compost. There's so many things in there. Biochar, manure, leaves, watercress, garden scraps, worm castings, tons of really, really good stuff powdered up eggshells, crushed mineral dust. It's next level compost. So we're gonna mix that with some just regular compost and then mix a little bit of potting soil in and that's how we're gonna raise these beds up. So I'm just mixing this compost with the next level kind of horse manure biochar compost. And this is just acting as a filler kind of. And we got this compost pile here, right next to us here. We got that from the municipality. So um, double check at the end of, or at the start of the season and call your local municipality and see what they do with the compost that they collect if they do you know, uh, yard waste collection in your city. Sometimes they give these free compost giveaway events. So we actually got basically maybe about five yards of compost for free yesterday. So definitely anything you can get for free, give a call and see, see what you can scrounge up. So now we watch the tree hugger in his natural environment, even out the compost that he has just mixed up. <laughs> It must be contagious. There's a second tree hugger planting the tomatoes in the garden. Okay, so here's the finished garden. I'll just kind of walk you through it quick. This is a cell that we left alone for the perennial stuff. So there's, for example, cherries in here. We've got hascaps there. We've got kale that keeps reseeding itself, strawberries. This is that really nice sorrel. We've got some carrots that we're gonna let go to seed, clover. So this is kind of a little polyculture bed. Along the back, we've got tomatoes close to the trellis that will kind of help wind through there. Uh, we've got cucumbers close to the trellis that'll hopefully get up there as well. And then we've got squash that will kind of spread out and uh, kind of dominate the space. We'll try to get them to come out a bit we've got squash in here it's looking a little sad um, but that's what happens when you transplant in the middle of the day which isn't necessarily always ideal but you do it when you have when you can we've got tomatoes in here and these tomato cages there's nothing worse <laughs> 
There's nothing more inappropriate for a tomato than a tomato cage, but um, I guess it's better than nothing. So we'll put these in here. We do have those spirally things stakes that we could swap them out we'll probably put more tomatoes in maybe this one and we'll use those these tomato cages the small ones like this they're terrible the plank basically gets up to the point where you know it just falls over and cracks so they're really not great they're actually better for peppers and then we've got same thing we've got tomatoes in the cages we've got a couple sorry my hands right in the way uh, we've got a couple squash on the outside and we'll train them right across the bed and then we've got um, strawberry dig outs that we had when we replaced some of these gardens we dug up any strawberries we could and we just basically replanted them in you know wherever we could we've got peppers on the south side of the bed because they don't really get that big here and then on the north side we've got same thing more uh, tomatoes we've got the melon uh, the squash at the end of the row that'll climb across the whole row will kind of just force it along this path the whole way and then all of these paths are on contour so any water that wants to shed off is going to get stuck in this walking path and hold there kind of like a swale that'll reduce um, watering and then end of season we can pull back these stones we can rake the wood chips and put them on top to top up the beds with a nice fungally inoculated um, wood chip and i'll show you some of the like almost bricks of fungus that we pulled out there was a big one here but this whole area a couple feet wide is this giant block do you see it moving this giant block of wine cap spawn so i kind of tried to bury it so hopefully we'll get some nice flushes of king strephoria wine cap mushrooms in this whole entire bed in the future okay and then to water this whole bed i've toyed around a couple ideas um we've got this artesian well this is where our artesian well overflows it's where i do some of my biochar this is a whole entire pile of biochar um, that i'm just tarping for now and i'll incorporate it into compost but this is where our artesian forgive my shadow uh, where our artesian well overflow comes in we've got a little pond there with duckweed and i've stuck a little sump pump in there and i can run it for fairly cheap power i can actually probably put together a solar cell and run it off of that and then i can water this whole garden with free water and then I was toying with the idea of putting a couple rain barrels up there, topping it up when it's sunny, and running the pump when it's sunny, maybe on a timer and a float switch, topping up a couple tanks in parallel, and then using those, maybe putting them up on, uh, putting them up on some skids or blocks, because then you've got the height that you need to maybe gravity feed some drip tape. So that's all plans for the future for this annual garden bed but we're going to try to automate as much as we can and then panning right over past the grape trellis and the, where the chickens will be we've got that garden over there we'll pop over there real quick okay so this garden was kind of planted out the same way um, we've got a couple patches of garlic around some persimmon trees on the north side and then on the south side we've got um, same thing with the trellis and tomatoes tomatoes for the trellis and then we've got these squash that they're in shade now but they get full sun other than right now um, and they'll kind of just spread down the hill and we'll train these to just roll through this whole entire patch and we'll just fill this with squash and here's just a pan shot of the pond right now how it looks the service berries have finally uh, stopped flowering so they're done, they're about ready to set some fruit. And you can see that I use all the spaces we can. Right along this pathway next to the pond, we've got garlic and mint. And then we've got all these ostrich ferns here. And here we are to the main food forest strip. So stuff is coming along quite nicely. I just love this time of day. 
but everything's waking up and it's exciting. We're about to start a whole new season. Super exciting. You can see the ground cover mix that I spread in here is all start starting to sprout up. We've got service berry tree there. We've got some raspberries around it that we're going to have to keep an eye on. Make sure that they don't swallow that tree up. But we've got tons of ground cover coming up and it's going to make this little area look like a carpet of green instead of carpet of brown. And then we'll start pumping root exudates into the ground, start building that soil life. And that area will look like this, carpet of green, in the very short future. I wasn't quick enough because Lucy came running out, but this robin here was using this perch. So I'm trying to do more of this kind of stuff as well. And that is put little trellises, connect them with some sticks. And I wanted to put a perch kind of in between central to you know peach 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 and that way they'll kind of sit on that perch looking for pests and if stuff like plum curculio shows up maybe they'll just pop into the canopy of the peach and collect those tasty treats and keep them away from my peaches so look to do stuff like that in your own food forests and then something else to look forward to, or you know, look when I show this shot, is all this front edge, I put borage. So I wanted to get pollinators coming into the food forest, and then also put a plant like comfrey that will act as a grass rhizome barrier, you know, a barrier to keep the grasses creeping in. And as far as the effectiveness, take a look at that. Look how effective that comfrey is at keeping the grasses from creeping into the gardens. So definitely consider putting, you know, big, big leafy plants like comfrey, hosta. I should probably have put them even closer together than this. But consider putting them really close to keep the grasses from creeping in. And stay tuned, this dogwood, this flowering dogwood, cornus species, is about to explode. Look at it. It's going to be a great next two days or so. And then quick little update on the pears. I don't know if you guys remember the rabbits attack the food force video. This pear got absolutely smashed. And it looks like it's going to actually be alright. So that's super exciting. Notice the bloom at the exact same time. So that's really good for pollination. But look at the rabbit damage. And this goes all around the circumference, but I guess it wasn't deep enough. I'm hoping. So this is a good, hopefully, it's a good reason why you don't overreact when you see damage like that in the winter and just chop the tree off. I know a lot of people did suggest that I just come in and chop that tree off at the ground because it's a goner. But maybe, you know, if there's... If there's no rush on it and you can sit and wait a couple months, maybe you can save the tree from a doom that would maybe caused by only you. Hopefully that will survive. And one last thing before I let you go. I know I've probably said that a few times now, but I keep sh seeing stuff I want to show you is the pawpaws. I think they've all survived. I don't think I lost a single pawpaw this season. So they've all survived. Another one here. It's got growth on it. Another one here. Every single one survived and we had a minus 40 day. I was kind of scared of these, but looks like good news.